So today I will be building some windmills and as a Dutch person I couldn't be more happy about it because if there's two things Dutch people like to do it's building windmills and complaining about the weather. Also I will be throwing some gorillas at the windmills because nothing could go wrong there, right? Hey everyone, my name is Poisonblade and I hope all of you are doing well today. So as I said in the intro, today I'm going to be building some windmills and then turning it into a gorilla habitat because honestly the gorillas were the only climbing animal large enough to not fall into the background next to these windmills because yeah, I'm basically going to be building the king of all windmills because well, I found this image on Pinterest which Right now for me Pinterest is like heaven when it comes to looking for inspiration for any kind of build. But then I found this image of these windmills. Of course just the notion of windmills made me very happy. And then the image that I found were these, as I said, basically the king of all windmills because they were really tall. Well really tall for like an old style windmill. So these ones that I made, we end up with like three windmills. Two big ones and then a tiny one just to have some variation but I think I made them like well 40 50 meters which as a Dutch person it's just like bow down to the king <laughs> yeah I really make it seem like we Dutch people are obsessed with windmills but then half our country or like at least one third or like the economic heart of our country wouldn't exist without them so in a way it's kind of true that we're obsessed with windmills but yeah, because the windmills are so huge, I needed an animal that was large enough to not fall into the background. Like if I had lemurs into this habitat, which at one point I was thinking of, I you just wouldn't spot them. Like the windmills would take all your attention. I wanted these windmills like in the reference picture, they had this wooden roof. I wanted a straw roof, but as I said, king of all windmills, the straw roofs that we had don't fit like they were all too small <laughs> and I was thinking like oh because there's kind of a slope to the windmill maybe if I make it even taller then the straw roof would fit yeah they are just as tall as the towers of Tower Ridge and yeah I shouldn't make these any taller even though my inner Dutch person wanted to make them taller I refrained myself from doing that and I wanted to kind of figure out like all right I'm going to need gorillas because they are the largest climbing animal. Maybe the orang-utangs are larger but then when have I ever truly focused on the animals? But I wanted to figure out like how do the gorillas fit into these windmills? Well not how do they fit into them but how do they fit into the overall build basically. Yeah how do they like what purpose do the gorillas have here? So then I quickly thought like, oh, maybe because the windmills are so tall, like maybe, well, the first image that I had was that they like climb up the windmills like King Kong style, basically carrying the workers up. But then I also just thought like, yeah, maybe not that. <laughs> maybe they just carry like the, all of the grain up or like carry all of the crown, it's like flower and such it down. So maybe that's the reason, but I still have the image of a gorilla King Kong climbing these windmills. Although I could then also put them with the Towers of Tower Ridge because they're basically the same height. Though I did really have fun by with building the blades of the windmill. Because, I mean, it's a windmill. If I make it huge, then I'm going to be happy. And also, it, it's really tall. I like building tall things. I like building towers, so this was basically rubbing every positive point when it comes to building for me. Even though, honestly, this build started out when I was completely non-inspired. Like, I had a little bit of like, uh, well, we all have these days where you just don't really have any inspiration or anything like that. And then I was just like, all right, I need to build. Because I was like, oh, I recently have kept up the schedule so much that I was like, yeah, I'm... I don't want to break the schedule so I just started building I already saw the image and so I was like all right I don't really have the inspiration to build but let's see what happens if I just start building and yeah you could see at one point 
I wanted to make these blades, or at least the uh, sails of the blades. I wanted to make them blood red. I eventually ended up not doing that. Because, well, here's the thing. I had to blueprint three colors of sails, as you could see in the video. And then I placed them into Kian al-Bashar, because when it comes to larger builds, I now build in a separate zoo, because it's just a bit faster. And then it was just like, debating which color of sails for the blades of the windmill should I use. I was really debating like, either it's the completely white ones, or it's the red ones. I had the beige version, and this is the first time that I just said no to beige. But then the rest of the windmills are beige, so... Yeah, I kind of failed still with that. And then I wanted to figure out the aqueduct situation. Because the floating waterfall tree that I had here before, I already said that was going to be a temporary thing until I lined up an aqueduct to this place. I finally did that, but it didn't really work out the way I wanted it. So I basically made it so that the aqueduct at this point goes underground. But that going into the middle windmill, you still see the aqueduct so that it's still there. And then I also placed like a reference on the ground of like where the track of the water or the aqueduct goes underground. So that, I mean, if let's say the aqueduct or the channel gets blocked, then you immediately know, oh, there I need to like remove stones or remove earth to fix it. Yeah, now I just have the idea of a sewer. Good thing poison <laughs> uh, but anyway in the end it worked and i was thinking like oh you know i have another of those floating trees with uh, water coming out which also should be temporary when it came to the kangaroo habitat with the coffee plantation but i really like that tree there and also i just don't really want to have an aqueduct going straight from the giant noria that i have built yeah, that floating tree might be permanent. And this one just, you know, now is gone. Like a lot of animals, when I built these fences made out of sticks, they can't climb them because the sticks are too close to each other. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but the gorillas could climb them. So I used the trick with the elephant grass. Like if you turn the elephant grass around and, you know, basically have it upside down and have it just slightly below the surface of the ground, just so that you can't see the base of the plant the animals can't walk over it again this was a very old tip someone gave me on stream it really works well like if you want to have a habitat without any fences you still want the animals to not be able to escape use the elephant grass it really works wonders and yes i also have started using some of the aquatic pack pieces that literally just look like grass out of water it just looks like very green grass but when it came to like the nature of this place it was really just like i want to keep this as open as possible not have really huge trees next to it just so that the height of the windmills was really just in your face so yeah when it came to the gorillas like they have two islands because that one island isn't enough so I wanted to have them have access to both islands. And luckily here the reference picture also came true because there was this, well, sort of wooden scaffolding between two mills. And I turned that into a bridge. And I, yeah, this is also foreshadowing actually what happens later in the episode because wonders happen or miracles happen because I actually built a walkable bridge. Like usually I do those all screen because for some reason I can't be asked to build a bridge. Building a rickety scaffolding like bridge like this one, I for some reason don't have an issue with. But if I need to have a bridge where you can actually walk over it, it's just a, for me the least interesting build to do. But yeah, here is well a little bit of an insight into me. I love this bridge, but I also hate it because I love symmetry and this isn't giving me any of that. So it was basically just like, it looks rickety and it looks like it could literally fall down any second, but that's how it's supposed to be. It's not symmetrical at all. Also, yeah, this bridge that's now in between the smallest windmill and the middle one. Yeah, it's not usable by the gorillas. 
but it wasn't intended because it doesn't really have any use, even if it was usable, like it doesn't go anywhere. But of course, that rickety bridge, going with the idea that the gorillas like maybe take the grain up into the windmill and then the flower down. I had to have like a doorway so that, you know, I mean, this is just a thing with Planet Zoo, the animal poop. Like these gorillas would poop on the bridges. I also see them as kind of like, uh, this is just a thing overall with any kind of like ape or monkey. I just see these gorillas just looking down at you or down at you from these bridges and then just fling their poop at you. I mean, I really gave them an elevated place to really do that well. Also, I have to say this before I forget it, because usually, like, this is something that happens commonly whenever I ha record a voiceover. I have, like, five points that I want to talk about, and then I only usually talk about two of them, and I forget the three, and then I'm just like, yeah, when am I going to address that? But, uh, yeah, there might be something coming on first Christmas day or maybe the second day of Christmas. It's going to be a short video because of course I am going to take a little bit of a break because it's Christmas. There's food. <laughs> yeah, forget about the family stuff. There's food. Like I'm a squirrel. I'm attracted by most food. Most. Especially chocolate. Yeah. And any kind of Indian, Chinese, Japanese, Italian, Spanish, Moroccan, Mexican. What kind of food don't I like, actually, is basically the better question. But yeah, there might be something special coming on the first day of Christmas. Kind of like my Christmas present to you guys, because this video isn't Christmas related at all. Even though that's... It's kind of like the good YouTube thing to do, to have like special videos surrounding Christmas or surrounding the holidays. And I'm just like, windmills. I mean, they're special to me because I'm a Dutch person and I like windmills. And I like tall buildings that... Yeah, while I was building this, as a squirrel, my mind immediately went to, how do I climb this? But then I want to climb every tower that I've built so far. Like, I wouldn't say that it's... Because of Assassin's Creed, although Assassin's Creed played a huge part in that, but I just, I like to climb things. Like, I was the kid that was usually up in the trees, like climbing the trees surrounding the house. And no, I have never fallen out of a tree. I'm a squirrel, I don't fall out of trees. I fall out of everything else, but not out of trees. I also have, yeah, I have fallen down the stairs again, once. Yeah, I mean, I've also, I've actually fallen quite a bit of times. Also, because I'm wearing glasses, or I, well, I have to wear glasses. I, actually, I don't need to wear glasses when I'm building or when I'm in front of, like, my computer. But I still do, because there's literally, for me, no difference in if I look at my PC with glasses or without. But... I have found out that if there's anything like sports related, especially with like balls, my face just attracts them. And when you wear glasses, that is terrifying. <laughs> because, I mean, we've all seen like the like stereotypical movies where like the kid with glasses gets a ball in the face and the glasses break. And then like my greatest fear is that the actual glass in the glasses breaks and then I am blind. Because then I'm stabbed in the eyeballs with my own glasses. Uh, what point was I supposed to make here besides me being uh, basically a target practice whenever there's like any kind of sports related to balls? Yeah, anything. Although, I am actually, now that I think about it, the only sport where I didn't attract balls to the face basically. Like yeah, basketball was really fun for me. But um, rugby? Yeah. So, I used to be, well, I'm still heavier, but I used to be a heavy kid, but when it came to rugby, nobody wanted to dare go near me because I would just be like a literal battering ram. Like, I didn't care if I hurt you, I just ran and just went like a battering ram. Uh, at one point, a kid literally said to me, yeah, we're not get getting near you because we're literally afraid that you will destroy us. So, uh, yeah, 
in most sports, I'm afraid of the ball. But if you give me a rugby ball and say for me to go, then get out of my way <laughs> because I will run like hell is after me. <laughs> uh, which probably is the case since um, how many times have I talked about poisoning, murdering, human sacrifice? I mean, I've built three brothels so far. I mean, yeah. My voiceovers are the. Uh, Let's just say if there's like that friendly FBI agent that always watches whatever you do on the internet. Mine one is literally just like, either I should send him to a mental institute, or he is just a worldwide threat. Or he has poisoned someone and has like 15 bodies in his basement. Which, I mean, considering I'm Dutch and, uh, you know... We usually don't have basements, because if you dig down too far into the earth here, I mean, most places here are beneath sea level, so... If a Dutch person has a basement, it's kind of like... A status thing, almost. It's not really, but... Kind of looks always like it, like, oh, you have a basement. I'm really just shitting on the Netherlands in general now. But, yeah, it's, it's late in the day again, so... You guys are getting loopy. Also slightly hungry poison blade because I talked about Christmas and then, you know, Christmas for me is mostly just like food. So now I'm hungry, loopy and... Mm, actually, that's it mostly. I also now have just an uh, urge to eat a lot of chocolate. But that's probably because I just worked out and, you know don't want to work out like this is the weird thing when you were working out again i don't want to turn into a workout channel but it's one of the most interesting things to today be, well today the past few months because i mean pandemic and such so i'm just like constantly working out now halfway through the workout you really see a shift in just my entire motions because in the first half i'm like happy and I'm usually listening to music, so I'm slightly dancing to my music when I'm working out. And then halfway through, I literally become that incarnate. I'm just like, why am did I do this? Why? And then, like, when I'm done, I'm just like, uh, everything hurts. And then the next day, let's do it again. <laughs> uh, again, like, I think I said this once, but it really seems that if you really are into working out, how far is the step to really get into BDSM? It hurts, but then it's somewhat fun because it hurts. Uh, was there a point to this entire video? I don't think so. I mean, I built windmills, I threw gorillas at them, I talked about me being a battering ram when you give me a rugby ball, and something special might be coming on the first day of Christmas. So, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. There's no point to this video, but, but it was a fun one to make, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. There is the like and subscribe button if you want to see more, and there's a notification button that looks like a bell, but then whenever that rings, hell will freeze over. So, with that being said, I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.